So having looked at a chain of inverters and how to optimize the chain, let's graduate to a chain of random logic. So the problem statement was done in video 4.1, but let's restate it. We have a chain of n logic gates. Each gate is different from the one before it and the one after it in general, and they are numbered from 0 to n minus 1. We are given the size of the first gate, CG0, and again, knowing input capacitance CG is equivalent to knowing uh, the size. We are given the final load that we have to drive, CL, we are given the number of gates, we are given the type of each gate, and all we have to do is to size each gate so that uh, we minimize the delay through the entire chain. Sizing the gate means knowing K for each gate, which is the factor by which we multiply uh, the aspect ratios of all transistors. So how do we do that? Why not just do it the same way we did it for the uh, inverter? Let's just write down the expression for TPJ, the stage uh, delay, and then find out if we can maybe find a, uh, an expression for total delay that we can differentiate. And so if we write down the uh, delay expression for stage J, it's 0.69 resistance of uh, gate J, whether it's pull up or pull down doesn't really matter because we are assuming that we do sizing for a symmetric delay. However, it's important to notice that resistance, whenever we talk about it, is the worst case resistance, which means single branch uh, resistance. This is uh, multiplied by C internal for stage J plus C external that stage J observes. Uh, as always, C intrinsic or C internal for stage J is going to be C drain from stage J and C external that it observes is C gate from stage J plus one. So, so far we haven't really done anything different from what we did for the, uh, for the inverter chain. Um, the next step for the inverter chain was to uh, take CGJ as a common factor. And so we end up with one plus CGJ plus one over CDJ. So when we did that, we, uh, we then replaced CDJ with gamma CGJ, and uh, we used that as an expression for fan out. So uh, we just did 0.69 RJ CDJ into 1 plus CGJ plus 1 over gamma CGJ. And this became a very useful expression because the ratio CGJ plus 1 by CGJ is fan out for stage J, and this allowed us to proceed with optimization. So, so far it looks like we have, we're doing exactly the same thing we did for the inverter chain, which is true with one exception, that this quantity that we took outside in the inverter chain was meaningful. In this case, it is not meaningful. So what is this quantity now? This quantity is the intrinsic delay of the gate. So it's the intrinsic delay of the logic gate we are considering. Uh, and so we just call it TP uh, naught of the gate. It's the intrinsic delay of the gate. Is this a constant quantity? Is it independent of size? Let's look at it. Let's just consider our, you know, like a generic complex logic gate. And let's consider the, um, the intrinsic delay for this logic gate and whether or not it is independent of sizing. Because the reason we, uh, we considered this quantity useful for the inverter chain was because it's independent of sizing. So let's, let's consider that first. And, you know, the answer is in advance, yes, of course, it's going to be independent of sizing. That's all, you know, that's the whole thing about, uh, about intrinsic delay. But let's assume that every transistor in the pull-down network is sized 2K, uh, where K is an integer number, and everything in the pull-up network is 4K. This is, again, done to guarantee a symmetric delay in pull-up and pull-down transistor, in pull-up and pull-down uh, delay. So this is the only assumption we make here while sizing. So what's the uh, intrinsic delay, the unloaded delay? So the unloaded uh, capacitance is uh, 12K C0, and uh, the unloaded resistance is uh, R0 over K. And so K will cancel out, and we end up with 12 R0 C0. What this tells us is that this gate is going to have the same intrinsic delay regardless of its size. And this is true for all gates, for any gate, its intrinsic delay is a uh, basic quantity that is related only to the technology. So the conclusions we made about TP0 in the inverter are valid for the gate. You know, there's nothing different here. 
Intrinsic delay is always a physical constant that has to do with the technology and not with the size of the gate. So what's the problem? The problem is when we took uh, intrinsic delay as a common factor in the inverted chain, gave us this expression TP0 into 1 plus CG uh, J plus 1 over gamma CGJ. When we went on to take the uh, summation of TPJ, TP0 was the same for all inverters because it, all the stages were identical. They were all inverters. So this allowed us to take TP0 as a common factor outside the summation and end up with 1 plus CGJ plus 1 over CGJ as our objective for optimization. This is not true in this case because in this case, each stage is going to have its own TP0. This TP0 is constant for the gate, but it's only constant for that specific gate. So the NAND gate is going to have a different intrinsic de delay from uh, a 3 input NOR, which is going to be different from a 4 input NOR and so on. Right? So then the expression of the total delay, which is summation of TPJ, will become much more complex. In, in more, you know, in, in a higher level term, uh, in higher level terms, we have to talk about um, what's useful when you are, when you want to characterize the technology. So when you want to characterize the technology, you're usually given the intrinsic delay of the inverter as a measure of how fast this technology is. If they tell you that the uh, intrinsic delay of the inverter is 10 nanoseconds, for example, uh, then that's kind of high. But if it's one nanosecond, then that's kind of good, right? But you cannot expect someone to give you a catalog of the intrinsic delays of all the gates in the world. This is what we are requiring here. We are requiring a knowledge based on technology of the intrinsic delays of each and every gate of not only the two input NAND and the two input NOR, but the three input NAND, the three input NOR, all kinds of gates. This is going to require a very long sheet of TP knots that we have to refer to in an infinitely long sheet of TP knots. And so this outside quantity is our problem. This is not a meaningful quantity to take as a common factor. So, um, we cannot take it as a common factor, right? This is not a useful quantity as a common factor. So let's go back to the expression of TPJ, and TPJ is equal to uh, 0 0.69 into 0 0.69 RJ into uh, C drain from gate J plus uh, C gate from gate J plus one. And it's important to notice that this C drain and this C gate come from very different gates. They are gates that have very different um, architectures. So when we took CDJ as a common factor, it gave us a uh, rather useless uh, TP0 gate on, in the outside. I want to take something as a common factor that is useful and that is the same for all gates so that we can take it as a common factor outside the summation and it's a reference point for everyone. So what's a good reference point? A good reference point is actually TP0. So let's take TP0 as a common factor. And TP0 is equal to 0.69 RJ for the inverter times C drain for the inverter. So we're going to take that as a common factor. So we're taking it as a common factor for stage J, even though stage J is not an inverter. But that's still going to be uh, fine. Uh, so inside, we're going to have to deal with RJ, which is the resistance of st stage J times CDJ, which is this product divided by this, because we have to get rid of it, because it didn't really exist there in the first place. And again, we have a second term, which is CGJ plus 1, over this term again, because we still have to get rid of it, so R inverter times C drain inverter. And so this is the expression of TPJ, because if we uh, write it this way for all stages, it will be meaningful, because we have TP0 as a common factor outside. But the question is, what is this quantity and what is this quantity? These two quantities, we have to find a way so that we can um, estimate them in a systematic manner and so that we know um, what they mean and we know what their impact is on delay. So these two quantities are weird and we have to figure out what they mean. Uh, if you look at the TP for an inverter stage, it was TP0 into 1 plus um, Fj over gamma. And so we kind of know what this quantity, this first quantity is in an inverter and what the second quantity is in an inverter. This first quantity should be unity and the second quantity should be Fj over gamma 
if you are dealing with an inverter. So we have to find out how this is going to be different if we are dealing with another kind of gate.